although some think that I know it all, I am still learning by the day. Audio might be based on science, a significant part should rather be considered as a craft. And that's all about experience. Let me share with you some of these experiences. I have been involved with network audio players since 2003, already 15 years ago. There were two reasons to get involved. My son used his computer to play music over an old but still very good sounding stereo, Musical Fidelity A100 and BNS loudspeakers. The Moran CD player with upgraded clock oscillator was not used, too inconvenient. He rather shared MP3s with his friend. I saw the possible future of audio and didn't like it. The second reason was the market introduction of the first squeeze box. Slim devices already had issued the Slim Player two years earlier, but that sounded horrible. Over time I had three squeeze boxes, the first model, the Duet and the Touch. In that time I discovered the influence of a good power supply. It was also the first time I came across the S-Boost the best of two world solution linear power supply. I still own it. Over the years I experimented with many ways of playing audio files, like from a Mac Mini using a plethora of players. Initially iTunes with many bit perfect editions, then self sufficient players like Amara, Orivana, J River, Pure Music and others. The DAC was then the fantastic Chord QDB76 HDSD and for a long time I thought it was the best achievable with file based audio, at least for me. I did review the Meridian Sulos Control 15 and the MediaCore 200 network players and was rather impressed. They sounded fantastic over my Chord DAC and the user interface was from another world. But so were the prices, the inability to play my 500 DSD albums and the limitation of relatively small hard disks. It was only three years ago that the Dutch distributor of Meridian pointed me in the direction of Rune Labs, founded by the people that wrote the Sulu software. I got a license and was sold completely. At about the same time the Sonora Micro Rendu network bridge hit the market and it brought a new dimension in file based audio. The Mac Mini could be placed elsewhere functioning as a Rune Core server while the Micro Rendu functioned as a very clean USB output for Rune close to the DAC. Of course with the S-Booster BOTW PMP power supply. If I remember well the Cord Hugo was the DAC at that time. Not so much later SOTM introduced the SMS200 that was functionally the same as the Micro Rendu, sounded even slightly better and costed less. And they have an international distribution system. When SOTM introduced the SMS200 Ultra only a year later, the next big jump was made in playback of audio files. Together with the MyTech Brooklyn and MQA, the audio result was so much better than say three years before. My well maintained and modified more than 10 years old AudioNote Soro SE and the AudioPhysics Scorpio loudspeakers appear to be able to sound so much better. It motivated me to replace the old Kimber loudspeaker cable by AudioQuest Castle Rock, which again brought more sound improvement. The S-Booster power supplies on the Brooklyn DAC and the SOTM network bridge got replaced by the MK2 versions and again the quality was a notch up. Recently the S-Booster on the Brooklyn was replaced by the Syntex power supply and yes, that again brought further improvement. See my reviews for more details, the links are in the comments and at the end of this video. The first I learned in an early stage was the importance of a good power supply. But what is a good power supply? Of course it has to have very low noise, properly controlled constant voltage and sufficient amperage. 
These demands might vary between devices. For instance, the MyTech Brooklyn uses internal DC-DC converters that have a high demand for instant high current. Switch mode power supplies are better capable of delivering that, but usually are noisier than the linear power supplies. The Syntax linear power supply appears to be able to beat the internal switch mode power supply of the Brooklyn. Not needed for a network bridge, but ideal for the Brooklyn. The AccuFox switch, an improvement I forgot to mention earlier, sounds best with its own switch mode power supply. There appears to be no easy answers and the consumer can only judge by trial and error. That's why I move somewhat ahead as an explorer. The most astonishing was the discovery of the immense influence the quality of the digital signal has on the sound quality. That initially did not make any sense. An asynchronous USB or Ethernet signal should, at first sight, not be sensitive to timing errors. But the influence is enormous. I am now convinced that the difference between good digital players and truly high end players has to do with the power supply timing perfection in the digital domain and time smearing caused by the digital to analog conversion, especially the reconstruction filter. These things are of course interleaved. A poor power supply will cause jitter due, due to voltage variations on the power rail and jitter will cause the digital to analog conversion to perform a poor reconstruction of the signal. With CD players the mechanism will put a strain on the power supply and the idea of reading microscopic pits from a 200 to 500 RPM spinning and vibrating disc at a speed of 5 km per hour, 3.5 miles per hour is ridiculous. It's a miracle it works at all. But it does, sort of. Good power supply and careful handling of digital and analog signals, as I describe in my series Audio Hygiene, brings you more quality. It's like with food. You should not only buy the best fresh ingredients, but use good oil or butter to cook or bake in. Use a quality pan, cook or bake it the right time and let it rest after cooking in some cases. Even the presentation does affect the taste, I am told. It is the chain, not the individual link that define the strength of a chain. If you only use one strong link, the chain will snap at any place but the link, but it will snap anyway. It's the same with stereo. It's great that you use a good power supply, but if only one other component isn't of the same quality, the return on investment will be small, let alone replacing one poor component by a better one in a chain of poor components. That's what happens when people say they hear no difference. I am no researcher nor developer. I am an audio journalist. I evaluate equipment by using it and only do basic measurements to check if there are basic faults in the design. Like car journalists review cars. Next Friday 1700 hours CET yet another video will be out. And if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you know when the new videos are released. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my channel, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.